this is all I do, man. You know, we, we free feed these guys. There's plenty of food and water out all day. Um, and if <clears throat> they're in and out all day, usually out, but they have access to food, water all day. Uh, everybody's getting big. That's one of Loso's. That's fan. And then Loso looking good. Buster, everybody's looking good. So the diet works great, and even the husky and the corgis are eating that too. So everybody's on the same diet, makes it pretty easy, and they free feed, so they get as much as they want every day. If they run out, I usually fill the bowls back up, unless it's like late in the evening when they run out. touch of corgi this little dude's all excited because he just got his first bath uh, he's been making a mess he had crap stuck on the bottom of his feet so we got him cleaned up he's ready to go he's about to potty it looks like and then I'll pick him up let's tell you this guy's name for anyone that commented I appreciate it um, he is the sole survivor of seven pups unfortunately that was the bad news uh, summer was calling him uno you know, U-N-O, and we were joking around, because his dad's name is Groot, about, you know, Uno Twig. So his name is Uno Twig, spelled U-N-O-T-W-I-G, but that is not how you say it. So, hold on. So, let me introduce you to You Know T-Wig! <laughs> You have to say it, you know T-Wig. That's his name. You know T-Wig. <laughs> what about his daddy Groot? Or maybe Ellie? G-Root? Or Ely? <laughs> yeah, I know. Dumb jokes all day. Here we go. Well, welcome to the bully and the husky side. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed you know T-Wig from his daddy Groot and Ellie. He is our newest. Uh, he'll be out in the yard soon after he's completed vaccinations and so on. Plus that little dude's little, so we don't want him hurt. Uh, everybody's been asking upcoming breedings for me. Uh, if I do any this year, it will be those two that you see right now. Champion Buster and Champion Loso's daughter Ripley. That would be the only one that I uh, am thinking about currently. You know, there were only uh what is it april right now so it's not an april fool's joke we're past that plus i don't play jokes life in general is enough of a joke <sighs> i don't need a day for it lightning what you doing girl this is the champion buster's full-blooded sister she is a grand champion jaws daughter to her mama bustello same exact breeding as buster uh they're just busters two years older so then, let's see, who else we got? That's Champion Loso running around. Champion Loso is a short classic. Um, been talking 
you know, a few people about him. He is an awesome cleanup tool, guys. If you have a really bully girl, then Loso uh, does a good job cleaning up movement and, you know, like bites and so on. So that's what I love about him. Uh, Buster, I don't know yet. I hope that Buster, you know, if I do breed him, I hope that he produces as well as his daddy has. You know, Grand Champion Jaws has done a phenomenal job. Uh, then we got Miss Plato right here. That is a Loso to Doe daughter. Uh, over here we have Loso to Nehi. This is Solo. She was my first pick female. And Fly, second pick female. Uh, they're both sisters, full blooded. And they are full blood too, also. My buddy Van. Van, where you at, Bo? Van's almost as big as his daddy now. They're getting close. He's as big as Buster currently. Um, maybe probably about five pounds weight-wise difference. And Buster's head is still bigger. Like, Buster's got a really nice head. Lightning's got a phenomenal head too. So, a Van's gonna be a tank. Um, I think he's pushing 60 pounds currently. And he is... Uh, I want to say seven, possibly, I think about to be eight months old. I'll have to look to make sure. But that's pretty much, he, he's getting to be a big boy. Um, not sure where he's going to be for height. He's still shorter than Loso. Loso's 17 and a half. Buster's about 16. Um, and Van, 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 come here, bro. Come here, man. Him and Buster are very close in size right now. Isaac and I are going to get the scales out and see what the boys weigh today. We'll check on them and see how they're doing. I'll let you know. We'll continue this in a minute. All right, so we got everybody weighed yesterday. Uh, happy Monday. Uh, this video has taken me a while to do. We took a break from videos for a minute. Uh, so the weights are, we got Mr. Loso at 70 pounds. We got Buster at... 65 pounds and then my big buddy van he is about 55 pounds right now and he was born uh august 4th so he's doing good like he's uh let's see four yeah he's gonna be nine months soon he's eight months right now yeah he's eight months right now so August 4th so yeah doing well then little man doughboy where you at buddy he's 41 pounds so he's getting big quick too then we've got Miss Ripley she's 67 currently then we go to lightning she is 48 pounds lightning is my uncropped girl grand champion jaws daughter then we have miss fly the white girl she is 52 pounds then her little sister loso stop which is coming into heat get off of her dude so she's about to be separated from the pack because she's coming into heat um, little Miss Solo is 43 pounds. She's staying very compact. Doughboy is almost as big as her now. Then we got our... Oh, Play-Doh. Where is Play-Doh? There she is. Hey, Play-Doh. She's 36. After that, I got my girl Mika. She's 50 pounds on the dot. Then we got, uh, Mama Ellie. Our Corgi. She is a Pembroke Welsh Corgi. And she's 25 pounds. And then our buddy Groot, right there. He is 26 pounds. And from my understanding, Groot is Pembroke Welsh with Cardigan as well. I believe he's got Cardigan in him. I'll have to check to make sure. But little dude's badass. I really like him. He's pretty neat. And then their baby, Mr. T-Wig, he's at 4 pounds right now. And let me go update on him 
when I was holding him at the beginning of the video, he was shaking like crazy because he was still cold from his bath. But let me go get him real fast. And yeah, this little guy's four pounds. What's up, buddy? He's doing better today. He's not cold. So this is a little, you know, T-Wig. Doing good. Pretty little boy. All right, guys, let's go over paperwork real quick. Again, I've done it before. And uh, I had a buddy, uh, Jonathan Cinnamon, over at Cinnamon Family Bullies. He said, you know, why don't you go over, like, some of the challenges for new breeders. So I thought that was a good idea. Go check them out, by the way. Get, uh, subscribe to the channel. Give them a like. Check out the videos. Uh, they bought uh, one of Buster or Lightning's brothers. His name is Maui awesome dude and then they've got a pretty cool boy uh doc from royal kennels and then uh, their girl moana so they're doing pretty good over there getting started and set up and i think for a lot of stuff they've done a better job than myself um i think they have a better property so hopefully when i get different property we can get set up similar so when you receive your registration, um, this is what you get, and it is, you know, stamped and all that stuff. Uh, American Bully Kennel Club Worldwide Registering Office. And then what you do is you have the breakdown. So this is for my boy Van, and you know I was the I had the male and the female at the time of breeding, so that's why that's there. Um, this is his daddy Loso and his mama Nehi. So Loso came from uh, Jose Gori's with Grand Champion Ricky Ricardo and from King City, uh, Kiara Lenore. And she's a beautiful girl too. Then, and like Eris, uh, she's a beautiful tri girl. That's Loso's grandmother. The, the pedigree is pretty cool for both sides. So we've got, uh, Clearing the way, Grand Champion Ricky Ricardo. Uh, let's see, more that you may know. Uh, G Train is down in knee high side. You got Wolverine, um, Lock and Load, and yeah, those are probably the main ones you know. And then on the mom side, so that's how this works. The top side is dad, bottom side is mom. You got my girl Nehi, and she came from Fam or uh, Ne Fam, and she's with. Uh, she did an awesome girl. That was champion Scion's daughter, and Mira, and then um, yeah, Grant. I mean, phenomenal pedigree for real. She, he's two times or Nehi was two times. Uh, Grand Champion, perfect on the first try, or they called him Triton. And then, because he's two times G-Train. So, and you know that because you can go down G-Line, G-Train there, as well as there, okay? So that means in the history, G-Train's in there twice. Now, when, if I showed you guys like uh, Doughboy or Play-Doh or their mama Doe, Doe is loaded with like Lycan, Grand Champion Jaws, uh, Champion Homicide, all that stuff. Okay, so that's how you read the pedigrees, guys. And then the back of it is just if you ever decide to sell your dog, then you fill this out, you know, as a bill of sale, and you are able to do it that way. And then the new owner would then uh, send it in and register it for themselves. So that's kind of how it works. Um, but yeah, that's about it for that. So challenges for new breeders. All right, guys, let's talk. First off, if you want to register your dog, it's taking a while. It took me about three or four months to get that paperwork. And I've had a few puppies from, uh, or people that got puppies say the same thing about theirs. So be aware of that potential issue right now. They are behind. A lot of stuff's behind, guys. 
you go about anywhere right now, it's like nobody wants to work. So, I, yeah, it's one of those things where uh, <laughs> it's getting crazy. It, but we were already told it'd be this way, so you shouldn't be freaking out. We should just be repenting, praying, and so on. However, that's a challenge. Um, if you're registering new litters, though, it doesn't take as long for that. So it's just the permanent registration that's taking quite a while. So be aware of that. Um, other than that, guys, for new breeders, let's talk about it for a minute. The biggest thing is going to be your costs up front. Um, for quality blood, quality dogs, you're looking anywhere from probably... Depending on where you go, most breeders are not going to sell you quality dogs with full breeding rates for under usually 2500 and up. Okay, there are some that do, and I'm not knocking them. That's their choice, okay? Everyone has a choice. Um, it's just most don't go for that. And, guys, that's about the same with any breed now. For high-quality dogs, that's pretty much how it is. Um, so your initial cost can be high. And then if you decide to set up a kennel or anything like that, you know, you, you got the cost sat up very quickly, guys, to do things in a good way, healthy, and so on. You know, even where, how we have it, I'm nowhere, nowhere close to where I'd want to be. You know, I, I started this a long time, but when I started, I was at a different location, okay? And we had everything. And the guys over at LA Bully Cartel, they still do. You know, all that stuff is still set up that way. I think. I don't really go over there much, so I don't know. But, you know, it, I have that different now. So, and on the property we're on, we're just in our home. So I'm making do. Um, this wasn't meant to ever be permanent. And, you know, I don't breed dogs all the time. Um, I had three litters in a row. But before that, I didn't do a litter for two years, you know, so it's it's not like I just breed dogs all the time. Like currently, you know, I told you guys already, if I do any more this year, it would be Ripley to Buster. And I don't even know if I want to do that right now, okay? Um, my other, all my other girls are too young, you know. I had retired two moms, one because of age, one because of complications after in you know like while she was whelping puppies Nehi kept having a few problems and like with mastitis and so on so i just didn't want to do that to her again so i did fix her and then those two pups mama doe you know we weren't planning to fix her she was an awesome mom and unfortunately you know she was hit by a car and died so that was out of my control you know nothing i could do about that but, um, you know, even so, I don't know if I would have bred her again this year. Anyway, we had a lot. It was a lot to handle. Um, we had 28 puppies total. We lost one from the 28. And, you know, then the corgi litter was unintentional. Uh, that was an accident. It wasn't planned because Groot was still young. He was within boundaries, but it was sooner than we had wanted, Okay. And there's a lot of reasons, guys. If you, there's reasons why there's ethics, okay? If you're health testing and doing start certain things, certain tests aren't even able to be done until certain ages on the dogs and be, you know, like certified. So on some things, you have to wait until a dog's two years old. So if you're out there breeding puppies at 10, 11 months old or whatever, some do younger, they don't know anything okay nothing they know nothing about that animal so first off if you're looking to get into what you know into doing this i recommend that you not necessarily team up but try to learn from those that have been doing it for a long time and i'm not saying me if you you know you can ask me whatever you want to i'll try to answer that's what i do but guys, I learned from others, okay? That's why I share freely. I, I learned, not really for free, guys, put dogs, chill out. I didn't really learn for free. Don't think it cost me nothing. But, you know, 
they didn't charge me specifically. We were all friends, okay? So I learned. And from that, you know, I was able to, Buster, I was able to avoid a lot of mistakes because of that. And that's why I share with others because, guys, we are talking. These are live animals. You know, you should care for them. If you're not able to care for them, and that's where cost comes in, then you should not be breeding them. You know, if you can't control your animals, you should not be breeding them. Um, and that's why I said we had a mistake. It it can happen very easy. And, you know, stuff happens. And, you know, out of that, we only got one puppy left. I don't know that it's because of that. You know, we sent two for autopsy, and we were told that it was some type of a bacteria or E. coli or some crap and shit you know like we didn't have any problems and then that jumped out of nowhere so welcome to life that's why i said i don't need april fools life and life itself is enough of a joke all right so the challenges can be a lot then if you have boys and girls okay say you just have say you only have two males and three females okay well what happens is the females they all start to cycle together, generally. Um, so what happens is you're going to either have them all come into heat at the same time, or they're going to be like one after the other. Well, those two boys, even if one is alpha and the other's not, there's going to be uh, a competition there, okay? And if you're not careful, that little bit of a, a power struggle between them would turn into a full-blown fight. All right, like that's how it works and believe me I've had it you know I'm back up to four boys here so I'm very careful about who's out when especially like right now I put Loso up because it looks like Solo's coming into heat so I put him up because he's the worst one for trying to do stuff with that Buster's pretty chill normally he won't he uh he's pretty good they all stop if I tell them to stop and van's not too bad right now they're being pretty pretty chill about it so she's not in full blown but when she comes into full blown heat that's when the competition starts happening especially between buster and loso all right that's just how it goes guys these are animals um you know i was talking to summer earlier i said if people were raised in a different environment a similar environment and where we weren't taught everything in school and all that think about it you know, if you had a group of people raised just as a pack, essentially, they're going to act different. Like if they weren't taught rules and all that kind of stuff, they would act different, okay? The males would get competitive when the females were coming into uh, their, you know, ovulation and so on. Like, we're just so far from nature now that we don't sense it like they do, okay? But if we were actually in touch with nature it would be different you know men um believe it or not guys our bodies you know that's what pheromones and all those different things are and the animals sense those right away they smell it they know and they will act on it you know whether it be a lion pride or buffalo or ants or whatever the hell it is on the face of this earth that's pretty much how it is you know, God gave us the command to, uh, well, be plentiful. You know, su supply the earth. It's one big cycle. And everything gets consumed. From insect to human. The flesh goes away. The flesh gets consumed. Okay? The spirit does not. That's what we have to understand, guys. The spirit does not. So, let me uh, leave you with this today. A lot of people live and believe in reincarnation. Well, I do, to an extent. We're all spirit. You know, the, uh, I hear the cows out in the pasture today. All right, where we are, you know, the United States of America, we'll eat beef. In other countries... That's a sin, okay? 
You go to some countries, guess what? They eat dog, don't they? Well, guys, <laughs> as ugly as it is, it's a matter of where you are and with what's okay. I'm not telling you to, you know, eat dog and stop eating beef or none of that. What I'm telling you is think about it this way. What it, They are spirit as well as flesh. What if it's someone you know? Would you still treat them the same as you do? Would you still eat animals if you knew that it was spirit reborn? Think about it. Would you? Or would you treat this earth completely different? That's why there's people that believe that cows are their ancestors. Well, my saying to you is if that's possible, then it's possible that our ancestors are in anything, isn't it? We are all God's spirit. We're told that, you know, Jesus said the dead are conscious of nothing. Well, yeah, when the body's dead, the spirit's gone, okay? So that body is just flesh at that point. It's going to do nothing but rot and go back to the earth. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust, right? But the spirit doesn't, guys. God calls it back. That's why we're not supposed to fear death. You know, I mean, we're supposed to do our best to be good people, no matter what. And it's not always easy. Uh, Tom McDonald has a song called Buttholes. Go listen to that. It's like everyone's got one and trying to cover them up. Pretty much. You know, everybody's gonna... He says, everybody's gonna think you're an asshole, so you might as well be yourself. Because no matter what you do, there'll be someone... There'll be people that love what you say, and there'll be people that hate what you say. And as Jesus told you... Uh, I'm no part of the world and they hated me. So they're good. if they hate you, you know, I mean, honestly, guys, if you're catching flack, you're probably doing the right thing, huh? Like sometimes I get discouraged because I do get blocked on things. Uh, algorithms don't like when you talk about certain things. So they limit and they block. And that's okay because those that are supposed to hear do. That's how it's always worked. And in the end, we're all in God's hands. We'll go over more of that later, but those are they'd be the first few things I would say are the most challenging. You're going to have things like Parvo and Coccidia and help, you know, all kinds of different stuff is out there, guys. We're not supposed to fear it. Um, ultimately, you know, God knows our problems. He's given us tools to get around those issues. We just have to use them. That's how it works. Sometimes it takes time. You got to remember not everything's going to go as you want. I highly recommend that you never count chickens before they hatch, meaning don't sell puppies before they're even born. Like, that's kind of crazy. If you're accepting deposits and all that because you don't have money, well, you didn't really prepare, okay? That's kind of how I've always felt. I, I don't take deposits on any puppies or anything like that until I know they're healthy or I know they're okay. So think about it. We had seven corgi puppies, right? Imagine if I'd taken $500 on all those puppies and then they died. Well, then I owed people $3,000 back. That's foolish, guys. Absolutely foolish to do that. So the biggest thing, if you're looking to do something like this, you would need to look at it as a time investment, and you shouldn't be doing it for money anyway. It takes... To do it right and to make money is not easy, okay? Most of what I get make goes right back into these guys. I work every day. Like, this is my job. But when I sell dogs, I don't go spending all that money on my stuff. I'm not buying, you know, I don't go do that. I'm, I bought, uh, I ordered a bunch of playground equipment for them. And honestly, that stuff's expensive. It was not cheap. 
but these guys have worked and they deserve that you know so i put money back into them for them to enjoy and as an added bonus i enjoy it and you guys will get to as well so that's the cool part that's why i do this nothing more nothing less and i hope that the channel helps you guys that's all i've ever wanted to do just try to help you you know you can give a man a fish and he eats for a day you teach him how to fish he eats for a lifetime well i'm teaching you guys how to work i'm showing you how to work from home how to do things on your own um you know i used to do all kinds of uh which i'll be doing more of that like more artwork and different things throughout time that's what i do on this channel it's just for quite a while now our primary focus has been dogs so welcome to bibles and bullies that's about enough have a great day everybody we'll see you soon